Good morning retail traders. Today I'd kind of like to discuss a very important candlestick that I saw on the quarterly chart and also I want to talk about the scenario how I think I'm going to play it and what I'm looking at and I'm going to compare this to the SPY. This is the long upper shadow is the candle that we closed with on the quarter and I'm going to go ahead and pull that chart up. This is the SPY chart. It's a 20 year outlook and we've had a pretty good little sell-off as you all can tell it's been a pretty rough year since the war broke out in Ukraine now, I always like to use geopolitical issues when I'm trading stocks you know some traders don't like to do it but this has been I think a very important issue how the world is right now and I think that has a lot to do and the government that we're sitting in so this is a quarterly chart and we did pull back to that bottom where we were on the 200 day if you look at the yearly chart or the three year chart excuse me we're approaching that 200 day SMA now that 200 day SMA grounds up right down here to this year Darvis box that we had back in 2020 and I'm going to go ahead and draw that in with a square idea here. And that's that old Darvis box right down there. Now I did call the pullback on this stock and I also called the breakout on this stock to the 200 SMA on the yearly chart. When we were down here we had an open window. We had three black crows and that was my indication that we were going to have a turnaround. That was a pretty good flush. And then I called this here reversal out, this open window shadow here, and she ran up and hit the 200. It had to consolidate in the Darvis box that we had right here. So once we hit that 200, I called for a reversal. At least I said we hit a hard resistance and to start thinking about a pullback. I did not expect it to go all the way back down here to the beginning of that run. So that's where we are right now. Now we did close with a nice hammer on the on the daily and that could be signs of a small reversal to the upside maybe to the pivot point inside of this Darvis box proceeding this last crow right here we're gonna go ahead and draw that line in there that was my support line for almost a four or five day period and then we finally broke down last week and had another flush out so as I go back to that quarter look, just kind of tells me that maybe we could be in for some more selling pressure. With the market conditions the way they are now, and the government's overspending and the huge deficit we have, then we've got the feds raising the interest rates on us. It's still going to apply a negative uh, mindset to the market people are going to react in a negative way but then I got to think well we hit the double bottom so that's what the fat cats were looking for on the yearly chart they were wanting to go back to them June lows again and retest that bottom and that's what they've been talking about for the last two weeks so that's where we are right now. The scenario is we could have a nice little jump up to fill the gap of the bottom of that Darvis box, which would be right at 374. And if we can break that, we'll run up to the pivot point. But I'm going to come in here Monday. If the market's green, I'm definitely going to go in calls. And if we break below this support of 362.17, I'm going to go puts for at least a week, week or two because I think we can start to pull back even more. It depends on if the fat cats want to come in here, take the double bottom bounce, and run it up to the 51 EMA. And that's right around $400. And I can see that happening. I can see us building another descending triangle coming on down, but right now I'm calling the double bottom, maybe for Monday if we're in the green, to get a reversal to the upside to 374. And that would have to be the one that would break all the way up to 381. 
but also in the same mindset this could be a good setup for a pullback so I have to take it a 50-50 chance on this it's all going to dictate how Monday comes out I'm hoping that we do bounce up and have a small little bear run nothing's changed they're going to keep raising the rates I think they're we're in a new economy that it's unprecedented times and they're using old tactics to try to bring us out of this uh, inflation that we got in by the government overspending. I guarantee it if the government didn't have their hands in all this stuff we would be doing very well. And you also got to keep in mind that there's a huge disconnect between Wall Street and the private sector. And they'll go ahead and run this up. Take advantage of the, of the good prices that are in right now. But I still think we're in a very bear market and we could see a nice little bear rally to the upside and then another pull back and retest a triple bottom and then maybe break down. But if we come in here Monday and it's red I'm, and we go below 362.17, I'm going to be in puts long. And that's going to be it. I just wanted to kind of bring attention to that upper shadow long upper shadow that is a bear bear candle it means that the sellers took over here at the bottom of the day and they held it down here quite a bit just the opposite with a long lower shadow that means you could have reason to go to the upside but you always got to take in scenario of being in the now we are at a double bottom on the yearly and it could cause some upward reaction and then another pullback to a triple bottom. And that's it. I'm Washboard Jim. Please subscribe, ring that bell for future updates. I am live on YouTube every day showing tactics how I trade. It's the sneaky snake strategy. Uh, I did okay Friday. I got stuck in SPY. I thought we were going to have a little upside to it, but nah we went down so I had to take a loss on my spy but at the end of the day I played the SPX and I was able to make money so have a great day retail traders hit that like button